Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I'm here with my friend Simba and thank you all for being with us today. You've arrived at Tangle Tuesday. Simba says woof to all of you doggy and kitty pals and let's get started. Today's Tangle is going to be a really pretty one. It's called Fairy Wing and uh, it is by Joan Stark. I believe she's from Ohio. And as always, the step out for this can be found on tanglepatterns.com. Um, so this tangle starts with a random curvy line and you want to put lots, lots of little curves in it. And you want to make your curves kind of big and loopy. That's pretty big and loopy. Sorry, Simba is breathing hard. It's hot today again. And he is hanging out on the bed with me. Simba, say hi to your buds. He's not really in a barking mood, but wait till the buses start coming. All right. Step two is uh, just like in the pattern curly cue that we did a few weeks back, um, we're going to draw in another line and uh, we're going to curve that so that it runs alternatingly back and forth across this one. All right. And my tip for you is this, that you're going to want to make your loops fairly big. That will leave you some room to work in. The bigger and loopier <laughs> you can make these, the easier your life will be. Let's see if we can back up off that. Now, this is where the magic starts. So the next step is going to be to add little infinity shapes or figure eights or something like that, like this. And we're going to do that on each place where the lines cross over. All right. And you don't want these too big or too small, just kind of make them kind of narrow so they fit and you've got room for other things. And each place where the lines cross, we are going to, whoops, put one of these in. I should have made that a little thinner, I think. That's going to be all right, though. So let's make these a little thinner. There, that's better. And let's see if we can zoom now. And you guys make sure you leave me comments about uh, whether or not you want. Uh, Monday to be live stream day or if you'd prefer maybe to do that on Tuesdays we can certainly do that I would love the opportunity to take questions if anyone has them after I step the uh, tangles out that doesn't mean I will have all the answers uh, I frequently have answers but I also frequently don't know so I will always be the first one to tell you if I don't know something and I will also try to find out the answer for you. Oh, something interesting is going on out there. Simba's getting up. He is muy grande. <laughs> yeah, my big boy. All right, almost there. These little shapes are going to be the innards, if you will forgive the uh, colloquial comment, the insides of a little uh, wing shape, if you will. Now, once you have these at each intersection, here's what we're going to do next. Let me choose this one so that there will be room here for you to see uh, where we're going with this. So we are going to, still can't get this light right. 
we are going to start at the center where these lines cross and we're going to come up and make a little uh, leaf or wing shape here, like so. Or a petal, flower petal shape. And we're going to do that on all four sides. Yes. I wanted to mention you all should go and check out Joanne's, uh, or Joan's, um, sorry about that, Joan. Uh, her uh, tangle step out and her art that goes with it on tangle patterns really beautiful and uh, she has all kinds of fun embellishment uh, ideas on there and I it's definitely worth checking out thanks for an awesome tangle Joan that was that is that is something that I you know it's not my best thing and that's okay some people were meant to come up with those maybe and some not because I know people that come up with them constantly and that's just not something I guess I'm blessed with. That's okay with me. I am happy to explore them after other people put them together. And I've got a couple from friends that I'm wanting to do. Oops. Yep, that was it. <laughs> I was going to put another one in there. Which, of course, you could do if you are wanting to, um, well, I guess technically I should try to keep my lines within that. You can see now, though, why these making these, these loops large is a good plan. Um, otherwise, you are really hunting for space. It's uh, just a little bit easier to keep in control of it all. Just let your space guide you. There is another dog running around loose, and he is very wound up about that. Oh my goodness. That silly dog. And you can see I'm just drawing behind where anywhere where they are crossing paths with something already there. Uh, if that happens, that's awesome because then you get a little bit of overlapping uh, in there. And that is always a great way to enhance your tangles is to uh, cause them to overlap either uh, with themselves or each other. Simba in his exuberance has just knocked over a big basket of pens. So I'm going to have to go get on the floor and pick them all up. And I think I heard some of them drop down in the air conditioning vent. Something to look forward to. Alright. I can't get mad at him. He's just being him. And who else would I want him to be? Ooh, that one's quirky. I like it. Alright. Now, almost there. So, pretty cool. And lower this down just a tad. There. Okay, you can sort of see. Now for the fun. You can, in the step out, she has another little um, loop added now inside, which you can definitely do. Makes it very interesting. I have also tried my standard flower petal thing or leaf thing, whichever it happens to be at that time. And that I actually like, especially with the dots adding some density. Um, I like that, I like that effect. Um, what else could we do? We could just put some little hatch marks to add some density down there. 
So that would be something. I'm not particularly good at that, but that's okay too. Uh, we could... I wonder how this would look if I added a little rounding in here in the middle. Uh, I don't know. Mm, that's not as effective as it could be if that... Yeah, anyway. Um, they don't all work out. That's the fun of this. We could put little orbs in here. And that might be fun. Oops. We could put, um, hatch marks going the other direction. And that would m make it look uh, sort of bee-like. You could certainly stripe these if you wished. But um, these are pretty cool. Whoops, I did that the opposite direction, didn't I? All right, down from the top. There. So I like that. Uh, anything you want to do to these to bring some interest into the middles, uh, yeah, I think is fine. Absolutely fine. So after you play with the middles, then uh, she has uh, decorations coming out, little tendrils of, and in her art, she puts zinger on here. She, let's see, let's see if we can do some of this. She, sorry, she has got some little spirals coming out like that. So anything you want to do to the middles to add a little bit of interest, I think, is just fine. Just play with it. Make yourself happy. I really like the way this looks. So, um, you know, sky's the limit. Play with it. Uh, and let me know in comments what you've decided to do. Which way do you like it the best? Now, for these little tendrils, she also got really creative you can do some fescue and give it a different look that's fescal not fangle right fescue not fangle right um let's see well that wasn't the best placement but anyway So fescue. Um, she also had some in her art. Had some zinger. Uh, uh 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 No, bud. I know you are feeling frisky. Let me finish. I'm almost done. All right, and then zinger, which is one of those that I um, struggle to get even. Mine always look like a little misshapen sort of muffin top uh, mess but anyway so zinger also a really really cute idea with this um, so all of these little decorations you can do as you like um, you know lots and lots and lots of possibilities well could have been better you know you can do whatever you like so let's talk really quickly about shading on this all right so for shading let's get out here uh, Joanne um, did several things uh, of course um, put some graphite in the center to sort of uh, darken that area And I'm not doing a careful shading job, just, um, in fact, is there a tortillon anywhere in the building? There he is, yay! All right. So, a little graphite in the middle will add some interest. Another thing uh, that might make this really interesting, and I believe that one of uh, Joan's examples and I want to apologize in advance for saying Joanne. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's Joan Stark. Um, one of her examples has uh, graphite spread 
in these loop areas where the little wing shapes are not. I don't know. I don't know uh, how patient I will be with that. Um, it might be helpful if I would use my 2B pencil instead of my F because that will spread much easier. However, this does a fairly good job and I may need to go in and and do some uh, graphite lifting from spots where I encroached a little bit too far. But um, anyway, this is a great way uh, to create some interest in this. And you can see if this were elongated, right, and done this way in a sort of a rectangular way, this would be a very pretty little frame. And you can make these as ornate and fancy or as simple as you like. And so I really like that uh, part of this. Let's do one more section here. You could also use mucha tendrils in this. Uh, that would be fairly effective, I think. Let's see how we do with this. Oh, well, that's not too bad with the F pencil. I'm just uh, not very steady with it today, and that's all right. Um, that's why I do Zentangle. No mistakes. I have loved the Project Pack 6. I don't know if y'all have been watching that. I have not done any tangling. I want to wait and order my little journal book that they have in that. I'm so excited about that. Um, I really want to work in the journal on this one. Uh, you don't have to, of course, but uh, it's going to be hard to replicate uh, an ink stained uh, page, if you will. So uh, anyway, all right, a little bit sloppy on the shading, but uh, you get the idea, right? And uh, I will probably, I will probably use this tangle uh, this week in our zine project. I really, uh, when I came across it in my, um, in my newsletter from Tangle Patterns, um, I thought, oh, that would be such a good thing for dingbats. Now that's a little bit too much. Um, the other thing that might really finish this off nicely would be to add some line weight or rounding here. A lot of times when I get these patterns and they look sort of blech, um, nothing wrong with this, I'm not saying that, but just to enhance it a little bit, um, I think a little rounding maybe between the petals might be nice and it maybe accentuating the wing lines. I really like that. Uh, you can put in, you know, a little ball in the middle. Hmm, interesting. Sometimes I just like to sit and play and wonder what would happen if I did this and do it and see. <laughs> and that's that's a fun that's a fun place. That's why that's why I frequently refer to it as playing with the tangles, uh, because there is a lot of play involved in this. Um, I might work with that again when I try this again. Um, I don't know. So you guys let me know in comments what you liked or disliked about this tangle. Uh, let me know what you think would be cool embellishment wise like zinger or fescue or something else. And uh, I'm really interested to play with this uh, tomorrow and see what we come up with. So I will see you tomorrow for our zine project. And uh, we are wrapping that up. I think we should be finished in another two weeks this week and next week. And then will be ready for some Christmas or holiday type um, tangling. So uh, I will see you then. Thanks for being with me today and uh, see you tomorrow.